with Dr. Joe here of the drjoe.com and the 2020 from.com. So, uh, what have I got in front of me here? Well, I've got a can of kombucha tea. And here is another flavor of the kombucha tea. And uh, here is another. So these are kombucha teas that I was drinking before. I was seriously into uh, consuming the kombucha teas, but I have stopped using kombucha teas. And uh, that is the subject of today's video. The reason why I stopped using kombucha teas is the subject of today's video. Now, I just want to say this. What I'm about to say in this very video does not necessarily apply to this brand of kombucha teas. It applies to all brands. And uh, I want you to pay attention to the entire video because uh, you may want to make up your mind as to whether kombucha teas are a food that you want to continue using or not. Okay, so uh, I'll share my story with you. Uh, so what's my story? How about we go back to the beginning? Why I started using uh, kombucha teas in the first place. So I started because I attended an online webinar where one of my colleagues, a medical doctor, uh, made a presentation about you know kombucha teas and the benefits and I was sold in that very uh, webinar and uh, I got home and I got myself some kombucha teas online and I started consuming kombucha teas on a regular basis now uh, as time went on uh, the so-called benefits of uh, these uh, kombucha teas were not forthcoming. The benefits that my colleague talked about in that online webinar uh, were not forthcoming. Instead, what I got was that every time I drank it, I felt a little bit unwell. I had headaches, nausea. But more importantly, uh, it was now negatively affecting my blood pressure. And for me, that became a no-no. So what I did was I dug deeper into uh, the uh, kombucha teas and uh, I'm going to share uh, some of what I found online uh, with you shortly. But before we do that, I just want to uh, do a quick plug. Uh, this is my book on managing uh, high blood pressure with lifestyle approach. Uh, links to get the book right below this very video. Okay. So why did I stop uh, using the kombucha teas or some of the things that I found when I did uh, a further research into uh, kombucha teas? Let's see some of the things that I found. So I came to the National Library of Medicine uh, website, which is PubMed, uh, to have a look at uh, some of the scientific papers uh, that have been published representing uh, kombucha tea. And then, uh, I came across all sorts, uh, and I got to say, a lot of it not very pleasant to read. And here was one uh, where they titled it uh, Kombucha Is it a poison or is it a potion? And the conclusion of that seems to be that uh, it's more of a poison than a potion. Um, and here is one uh, where uh, the paper was published in Iran and uh, is titled uh, Cutaneous Anthrax Associated with Kombucha Mushroom in Iran. And uh, this is uh, a situation where they applied the uh, kombucha to the skin. I didn't even know that you could apply kombucha to the skin. But there you go. They applied it to the skin. And it caused uh, what we call cutaneous anthrax. So uh, that's another one. Uh, next one is uh, a case report uh, of kombucha mushroom causing liver toxicity. Okay, this is hepatotoxicity, is, uh, liver toxicity. Uh, also, not very pleasant. Next one uh, is one that is uh, titled uh, Kombucha uh, is a cup of tea good for you. And uh, this one represents a case of uh, a 54 year old uh, asthmatic woman who presented to a hospital with a 10-day history of breathlessness and uh, uh, when they examined that she was found to be breathing really fast and uh, she had a wheeze as well and uh, further investigation revealed uh, what we call severe metabolic lactic acidosis and uh, this is a situation where you've got too much acid uh, circulating in your body okay too much acid circulating and uh, it can be deadly. And uh, it transpired uh, for the questioning that um, she had drank uh, kombucha tea. 
Uh, obviously, that's been linked to lactic acidosis before, and obviously, she had that as well. Okay, so also not very pleasant to read. Next one is another case report of uh, kombucha tea uh, causing uh, liver toxicity again. <laughs> so, uh, also not pleasant to read. Next is another case uh, report. Uh, where kombucha tea actually caused uh, myositis. Myositis represents inflammation of the muscle. Along with that, uh, this patient also had fluid around the lungs, uh, what called pleural effusions, as well as fluid around the heart that was stopping the heart from pumping properly. So, um, <laughs> you know, all of this case is not really pleasant to read. This is all about kombucha tea. And then uh, here's another one. Uh, this one is a lot more frightening. Uh, this is uh, a case of kombucha tea causing uh, uh, unexplained severe illness. Okay. Um, and they think it's uh, due to the kombucha tea. And as it happens, uh, these two cases, th these are two cases. Uh, one of them resulted in death. Okay. Someone actually died. Uh, as a result of having severe metabolic acidosis. Too much acid caused by kombucha tea. The second uh, patient survived uh, to tell the tale. So all of these, you know, they, they don't make for comfortable reading at all uh, when it comes to uh, kombucha tea. Uh, here's another one, a uh, case of uh, kombucha tea uh, toxicity. So after all of this, I also search for uh you know kombucha tea health benefits okay so those are the risks are there any health benefits so i did a further search uh keying kombucha tea health benefits and there were 32 results uh none of them uh, represented scientific trial uh showing uh the benefits of drinking kombucha tea none absolutely none so, uh, out of all of these results, uh, there was uh, a scientific review. So, let's have a look at that. Uh, so, here, is, here it is, and it's not that long ago. A uh, scientific review, kombucha, a systematic review of the empirical evidence of human health benefit. Okay? Uh, this is, they got to, it's, it's got to be empirical because so far, there are no human trials. There are no human trials at all. So what they looked at was uh, empirical uh, human health benefits. And uh, when you scroll down, uh, they looked at, uh, they had about 310 articles that they reviewed, 310 articles that uh, they reviewed in this scientific uh, review. And uh, when we scroll further down into the discussion, um, they talked about the potential health risks to human. Okay, when you drink kombucha tea, uh, you've got a long list of uh, potential harm that could be caused uh, by kombucha tea. You know, low sodium, lactic acidosis that we talked about earlier on, toxic hepatitis. This is inflammation of the liver. Um, another. Uh, this is a case where you know the the the, the, the this patient had HIV. Uh, not from the kombucha tea, but obviously he had HIV before and he ended up having lactic acidosis and, you know, kidney failure within 15 hours of ingesting uh, the kombucha. Uh, this is the inflammation of the muscle that we talked about earlier on. Lead poisoning from brewing kombucha in a ceramic pot. Okay. Uh, cutinous anthrax, which we talked about earlier on. Pellagra. This is vitamin B3. Deficiency, deficiency of niacin, nicotinic acid, pellagra, vitamin B3, uh, caused by uh, kombucha tea, allergic reactions, jaundice, nausea, vomiting, head and neck pain, metabolic acidosis, which we talked about earlier on, liver toxicity, and cholestatic hepatitis, uh, inflammation of the liver. So those are the risks. So what about the potential uh, benefits uh, to humans? Uh, well. There's a statement here in this uh, systematic review, which is very, very valid, that these health benefits of kombucha tea need to be tested 
in clinical trials for us to uh, take them seriously because a lot of it is speculative. And, um, and here are some of them. Uh, health benefits reported uh, in vitro and uh, in vivo studies uh, include uh, liver and gastrointestinal functions, immune stimulation, uh, detoxification, antioxidant, anti-tumor properties, health prophylactic and recovery effects through immune stimulation, inhibiting uh, the development and progression of, of cancer, cardiovascular disease, diabetes, neurodegenerative diseases, and normal uh, central uh, nervous system function. So these are the touted health benefits of uh, you know, kombucha tea, but none of them has been tested in humans. They're all animal experiments, uh, it must be noted, okay? Uh, done in rats, mice, rabbits, dogs, dogs, pigs, cattle, broiler chickens, and uh, human uh, blood cells in a petri dish. So all of these will need to be tested for us to take them seriously. So here's what I think regarding the consumption of uh, kombucha teas. As with everything in life, it's all about weighing the risks uh, against the benefits. Risks versus benefits. And from my data, from everything that I've, I've researched regarding the use of kombucha teas so far, the risks of consuming kombucha teas outweigh the presumed benefits of uh, consuming the tea. And I use the word presumed because uh, none of those benefits that are claimed online by the sellers, by the retailers, none of those benefits are proven scientifically, uh, certainly not uh, by human research anyway. So uh, is it worth it? Uh, in my opinion, no. Uh, and that's the reason why I stopped using uh, kombucha teas. Now, here's what I would say uh, for those of you who may still be dithering as to whether you want to use it or not. Uh, if you've got any pre-existing medical condition, it will make sense for you to uh, discontinue using kombucha teas. Certainly, if you're someone who's got a pre-existing uh, liver condition, lung condition, kidney condition, and I'll add heart condition. If you've got any pre-existing medical condition affecting those organs, the liver, the heart, the kidneys, and the lungs, uh, please, I will encourage you to stop using kombucha teas because uh, it's not uh, really worth the risks at all. Now, uh, the, part of the reason why I say that is because, uh, in particular, uh, the lungs and the kidneys, they are involved in balancing your acid base, uh, you know, in the body. So if you consume a lot of acid, uh, the, the lungs and the kidneys will help you to balance that out. And if you've got a pre-existing condition that is affecting those two organs, it does make sense that uh, uh, you stop drinking any kombucha teas. That would be my advice. Now, specifically, if you're someone who's got high blood pressure and you suffer from migraines as well, okay? If you suffer from high blood pressure and migraines, I will also uh, advise you to stop using kombucha teas all the way. I'm gonna do a special video regarding those two conditions and the kombucha teas uh, at a later date. But for now, one word applies to those two conditions, tyramine, okay? That's all I will say regarding uh, those two conditions for now. So, uh, that's my advice. And for those of you who may wish to want to continue using kombucha teas for whatever reason, uh, my other advice is that you should not drink more than four ounces of the kombucha tea a day, okay? That should be the maximum dose of kombucha teas that uh, you should consume uh, for those who may wish to continue. Uh, that way you err on the side of safety. So, uh, hopefully you got some value from this very video. If you did, uh, please give uh, the video a thumbs up. Please like the video and also please share this video with your friends, with your family, with your colleagues. And uh, if you've got any questions, any comments regarding the content of this video presentation, go ahead, leave your comments or questions down below. For now, I think that's about it. Until next time, well, this is Dr. Joe signing out.